Welcome everyone to Weekend Escapades. What do slot canyons and Bullionville Ghost Town have in common? Cathedral Gorge State Park, Nevada. Robert here, Weekend Escapades. We are in Cathedral Gorge State Park. We're going to share with you the uh, hoodoos and the slot canyons that are here in this historic area. Now there are several state parks clustered around Caliente and Pioche in Cathedral Gorge, of course, is our favorite. And not only that, but Bullionville, ghost town. Only the cemeteries left, but wait till the end to hear the story about Bullionville and why the cemetery is buried and nestled in these hills here at Cathedral Gorge. Cathedral Gorge State Park. Now this whole area was once a giant lake underwater in the Ward charcoal ovens that were here. Of course, this all goes back to mining history. I guess those uh, charcoal ovens were about 16 miles southwest of Ely, Nevada. We've seen those before. Most old mining towns, Silver Reef, those all had the uh, charcoal ovens, including Old Iron Town. Now we popped into the visitor center real quick. It's pretty small, but very nice and clean and some great restrooms. Some little video screens here and of course what looks like a Christmas tree made out of antlers. Very interesting. Now we grabbed our information and we're going to head on out boots on the ground in Cathedral Gorge Slot Canyons. And hey, we're going to bike this as well. It's uh, about 80 six degrees today but when you're here in this area it used to be a lake and this was lake bed and that's why all these interesting formations are here for some reason the sun is just beating down every part of you gets hot so the air's not that hot but the sun hitting you is just roasting us today so these little slots are, are kind of hidden because everything's the same color so you kind of walk along and find an area to enter through Fairly tall. Hard as a rock. And usually when you head in here, the temper changes drastically. It's probably about 20 degrees cooler at least in these slots. Oh yeah, feel how cool that is. Turn the corner, that's a good 20 degrees, if not more, cooler. And just gets thinner and thinner as you go in. You gotta go sideways. Look at this. And this one just kind of comes to an end right here. All right, so we're gonna head back out of this one, take a right and see how far the next channel goes. Now this area was settled by early pioneers in the 1800s, mostly because of mining and agriculture. And uh, I guess the automobile really started coming through here in about the 1920s. And that put Cathedral Gorge on the map uh, as people would drive through and, and see the location. So Cathedral Gorge today is a very popular destination with thousands of people coming here yearly. And they also have some outdoor concerts and vaudeville shows uh, in the area with some spectacular camping. Now these cliffs and spires that are found throughout Cathedral Gorge are the results of millions of years of geological activity from volcanoes. They disperse layers, hundreds of feet deep, of volcanic ash, Mennonite clay actually. Uh, and after a series of these violent eruptions, the bedrock uh, fractured, allowing both sides of the fault to shift. As you walk around the, the corners, you'll see those little trails and paths that go back in. And that's where you find these big, uh, I guess, slot canyons, if you will. And these are more like hoodoos. It's like they're uh, storing tumbleweeds here. 
they all just blew right here and stuck. There's another big slot here. It's almost like, uh, reminds you of a castle, the way it looks and you can get behind them. Like behind the castle wall. All right, so back to the formation. So the faulting that happened here formed what is now known as Meadow Valley. And over a period of time, Meadow Valley filled with water and it created a freshwater lake. And over the centuries, this prehistoric lake began to gradually drain and the lake shore erosion continued. It exposed ash and pumice and it left behind ancient volcanic activity. What you can now see and experience as Cathedral Gorge today. This is literally the results of a lake drying up entirely. So the water, the more water that comes through here, the more these kind of erode every year. And uh, makes holes in the ground. Now every time there's a rain or a storm here, or even melt off, runoff from the snow, uh, this Bennonite clay it gets soft and the walls become uh, very impressionable, meaning it changes shape after every weather event. So it changes all the time. Okay, so this kind of drops down. It's pretty slippery, this stuff. It's like a hard pack, but look at this. This is like a, it's like a chimney that goes all the way up to the top and a hole. So that hole goes all the way through. Literally made its own chimney right here from water, eroding that. And this piece just goes back into a dead end. But look how slick these walls are. Why don't they just slick rock? Hard pack. All the way up. That's got to be a good 50, 60 feet. Now right up here, we heard some uh, noise. Birds. There's a big nest. Right there you can see what they've constructed it. Got a big sticks. It comes right down here. And all this was lake bottom. Every bit of it, and that's why it's interesting, this formation. The ground is just solid like cement with some dust over it. But all this is just from water erosion. What makes it absolutely beautiful to see. Now we found that cave that goes all the way through into another room. But I don't think I would fit. And if I did, I'd worry about getting back. So maybe somebody else has done it. Let us know. You can see it's just sand here and it probably blows in. Now the sand is kind of made from the weather blowing through here and eroding the sand. And then uh, kind of makes it like a little sand dune. And then that sand blows over the top of this hard pack and makes it real slick, like I said, in a lot of spots. Some of these areas go way in and some just uh, go in a little ways. I think another, there's another one right around the corner. This little piece here, you can see the way it's eroded. Literally looks like uh, somebody built a wall almost on purpose. Out of sand. It's like a wall, look at that. Say. I can honestly say if you ever get the chance to get out here to Cathedral Gorge and see Pioche, Nevada and also Caliente, which is right down the road, about 20 miles, I guess, to the southwest and then Pioche being right to the north, about 10 miles. What a great location. They have a campground here and everything else, but you could ghost town explore and also see some old mining towns and see these amazing slot canyons. And it's a really good hike. Even on a hot day, you can get out of it by going in these slots that if it's 100 degrees outside, they're going to be like 75, 80. So I encourage everybody to come out here and take a look if you're ever in the area. And if you don't make it, hey, you can always watch the video and check it out. All right, so right here is the old water tower. So what this was, uh, the tower was constructed by the Civil Conservation Corp. And uh, during the mid-1930s, as part of a water system for the park, water was pumped into the top section of the tower. And from there, it flowed by gravity through pipeline to the picnic area 
because of the high alkali content, the water and the well was capped and system abandoned because uh, in the desert, a lot of high alkali water, uh, I guess it's just because of the heat and the type of soil. But right over here would be uh, the campground, but the picnic area was right over there so where it sounds like it was piped over to. So that picnic area with some restrooms right behind that sand kind of a wall. And we're gonna see if we can get some great views of this by hitting the biking trail in the heat and head across the desert, the old lake floor. It looks like this water tower had some iron and wooden floors in it and these windows but the water was all the way to the top and then used to uh, again use gravity to flow i'm trying to get the camera through these bars of rebar to keep people out of the inside of this there's the old wood frame around the door still exists from early 1900s all right so we're out here about a half a mile or so and it picked up the wind a lot of dust right back there is where the water tower is and the slot caves were in then they have the old bathrooms that were built by the core when the water was running but they've been abandoned since so old stone bathrooms beautiful views if you like the desert and more of the same so we're just going to continue on this pinion loop and see where it takes us all right so we mountain biked in and this is one of the slots where we got some shade because it's uh it's it's 88 in the sun in the desert you stay hydrated got the bikes laying along the trail here in the slot canyon beautiful beautiful area maybe just a touch warm but uh, if you were hiking it definitely too hot but at least when you're uh, biking with a little breeze keeps you a little cooler just got to pace yourself All right, so this was the original bathrooms built here back in the day if I'm breathing hard. That's because just at a huge downhill area, very fast on the bikes. Look at this. The old bathroom. Crazy. And a view while you're going to the bathroom. Whew, quite the bike ride. Three miles. Now before we leave, look at that. Little gecko action. All right, after that uh, exhilarating mountain bike ride through the desert, I'm gonna take about a half mile walk up a trail behind the visitor center on the way out to the Bullionville Cemetery. It's straight ahead of me, about a half mile. All right, so quite the little trek uphill all the way, of course, to the old Bullionville Cemetery. Straight ahead. I'm going to see if I can find some history on old Bullionville. Now, this is an old west cemetery. Being that again, it's about 10 miles, nine miles maybe, from Pioche, Nevada, the deadliest ghost town. So I'm sure name, being named Bullionville, that, that has to do with gold bullion. Bullionville, Nevada was originally named Ely City when it was established in 1870, but was renamed later that year. 
The name was changed due to the town's location near Meadow Valley Creek, which provided a reliable water source. 1873 to 1875. That was a short life. There's a few plots here. This town was established after the Raymond and Ely Five Stamp Mill was moved to the site. Now, Pioche and Bullionville Railroad was built in 1872 to transport ore between the mills and nearby mines. By 1875, Bullionville had a population of 500 and several businesses including stores, hotels, saloons, and a blacksmith shop. These are protected with iron pipe. Now the town was abandoned by the end of the decade after a waterworks was completed in Pioche, Nevada. Now some of the work done on the tailings in later years, but it didn't make it. And the town never recovered. This is all that's left is the old cemetery on the hill. I didn't know the cemetery was here until today. Never stopped on the road. Didn't see it up here on the hill. It was literally right there, next to the highway going to Pioche. Here's a little overview of Bullionville Cemetery. It says, why here? The flat land was needed for the buildings and structures of the silver processing town, Panacas Cemetery was maintained for members of the Latter-day Saints, the Mormons, who settled that town. Much as Catholics in Pioche had a separate cemetery for their church members, Pioche had both a public cemetery and also Boot Hill for the less savory citizens. The hillside overlook, the town site, was chosen for the final resting place of former residents of Bullionville. Many of the graves here are no longer marked. The wooden markers placed well over a century ago had weathered away by the time this became a state historic site. Death certificates in the Lincoln County Courthouse did not contain information on where the deceased were buried, so we may never know who lies buried in some of these graves. Well, that's gonna do it for today. From Cathedral Gorge State Park in Nevada, as seen behind me here, and also the old Bullionville Cemetery. And until our next adventure, Goodbye from Weekend Escapades. We'll see you in the next one. Look at that. There's some old stickers on the Welcome to Nevada sign. Some of them a little awkward. A lot of them down here.